What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to be notified every time I put out a new video on my channel. Iggy Pop would redefine the role of a rock and roll frontman. Rather than being a crowd pleaser, Iggy would become known for his antagonistic and sometimes dangerous behavior on stage. At one of the Stooges' final live shows, he would be beaten up by a group of bikers. Following that assault, the frontman didn't back down, almost leading to a bigger confrontation. It would be captured on the live album Metallic KO, and today we're going to talk about the full story. The Stooges along with the MC5, who I've covered in a separate video, the link is down below, would become one of the first proto-punk bands in rock and roll. By the time they recorded their live record Metallic KO, the band had already dealt with so much turmoil, with the group first breaking up in 1971 and then reuniting the following year. By February of 1974, the Stooges were on their last legs. As professional opportunities were drying up, Iggy Pop was nursing an unhealthy drug habit, in addition to his volatile onstage behavior. The night of February 9th, 1974, saw the Stooges play their final concert for almost three decades at Detroit's Michigan Palace in front of a pretty antagonistic crowd. That show would be captured on their 1976 live album Metallic KO, along with the events of what happened in the background that night. In the weeks leading up to their final show, the Stooges were zigzagging across Canada and the States, playing gigs to support their latest record at the time, 1973's Raw Power. On February 4th, 1974, the band was scheduled to play a hole-in-the-wall club in Wayne, Michigan called the Rock and Roll Farm. The club wasn't accustomed to groups like the Stooges coming through town, as it typically played host to mostly rock and roll revival and blues acts. Once the Stooges showed up at the club, their road crew complained about how difficult it would be to fit the group's equipment on such a small stage, but they made it work. According to the Guardian newspaper, who interviewed a Stooges fan named Bob Baker, who attended the show that night, he remembered how he had a bad feeling about the gig. He would remember seeing lots of bikers in the bar wearing the colors of a local Detroit biker gang named the Scorpions. As the Stooges took to the stage, the bikers started hurling eggs in the direction of the band, with Baker telling the newspaper, Iggy came into the audience and went right up to one of the bikers. This guy was big and heavy, and the biker just nailed him right in the face and he went flying backwards through the crowd. It's just a law of physics that if you weigh 300 pounds and you punch somebody, that punch carries a lot more wallop than a 100 pound guy punching you. So when he hit Iggy, he just flew backwards through the room, like something in a movie, and they all just laughed. Stunned, Iggy would stumble back on stage and tell the crowd, that's it, we're gone, and the band left the venue. It was an event that would set the stage for what happened five days later at the Michigan Palace in Detroit. Iggy would reflect back on that event almost 40 years later, telling The Guardian, the invincibility of the band was shattered. The show at the Rock and Roll Farm was to be a stopgap concert so the band could earn a little bit more money before heading to Detroit five days later to play at the Palace. Rumors swirled in the run-up to the band's gig at the Michigan Palace, with some reports claiming that Iggy had taken his own life, while others claimed the Stooges would employ a rival biker gang to provide protection during the gig, or the concert would be simply cancelled. Iggy would learn that one of the guys who threw an egg at him on stage was a new recruit for the Scorpions, and throwing the egg was his initiation. The Stooges were angry with what happened in Wayne, and Iggy showed up at a local Detroit radio station named WABX, and challenged the Scorpions to show their face at the band's gig at the Palace. When the day of the show happened, the Stooges had an up-and-coming band named Aerosmith open for them, and the venue was full. The Stooges were paid $5,000 that night, along with a portion of the door sales, so regardless of what would happen, the Stooges would make good money. Iggy Pop would reveal in the book The Uncensored Oral History of Punk what happened that night, saying, The next night all the Scorpions came down to the concert at the Michigan Palace, but we had our own motorcycle gang on our side called the God's Children, and they got up on stage with us. People were throwing stuff at us from the very beginning of the show, cameras and compacts, expensive shit, a lot of underwear, beer bottles and wine bottles and vegetables. But I had an arsenal backstage and a few throwers, so I had them all come out and whip stuff back at them, he'd remember. A Stooges fan named Skip Gildersleeve, who attended the show that night, would tell The Guardian, It was nuts. There were people that you thought lived out in the woods and only came out once in a while. It was like Charles Manson's followers. Now that fan who I referenced earlier, Bob Baker, who attended both of the Stooges show in Michigan that week, knew the end was near, telling the newspaper, 
I was extremely depressed. You got the feeling that it was his farewell concert, although you didn't know for sure. It was such a hostile environment. People were obviously trying to mess with his head. I thought, this guy's not going to live to be very old, he'd remember. The band would close out their night set with a cover of the song Louie Louie, but Iggy would improvise creating obscene lyrics insulting the bikers in attendance. That electrifying performance would be captured on the live album Metallic KO, where you can actually hear the hostile audience in the background throwing objects on stage. And following that gig, the Stooges were done, and they wouldn't reunite until 2003. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again tomorrow on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.